Good evening. Good evening. God bless you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want you, as you are coming on, please like and share this broadcast. Let somebody know that we are on live this evening to share the word of God. I'm excited that you are here. I pray that you have had a blessed day, whether you're commuting home or whether you're coming or wherever you are. I pray that you have received something from God, that he has kept you safe, kept you safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Listen, I'm excited because we are entering into a time that God is going to speak to us again. So I'm going to ask you to please like and share. Make sure that everybody knows that we are on today, that God has something that he wants to share with us and to make sure that we are experiencing the favor and the blessing of God Tell somebody, tell them, text them, let them know we are on the air and God has something to say to us. Listen, if you were with us this morning, you know that we began, we are in a series on stewardship, giving God our best. And I believe that this is one of the most, most one of the greatest um series that the Lord has ever allowed me to minister and to share. And I want to make sure that every person hears what it is that God is sharing with us. So I want to make sure before I start that you will just make sure to share it out. Let other people know that we are on this evening and that God has something that he wants to say to you. So today we've been talking about stewarding our time somebody just put time in to the comments stewarding our time stewarding our time put it in the comments times put that word time in the comments um god i believe um we talked about it this morning but i know how important it is for us to be able to steward to manage to look over, to be intentional about the time that God has given to us. We don't have the space to waste time any longer. We have got to be about stewarding the moments and the places and the spaces that God has called us into so that we can be able to use our time effectively. So I want to look at the scripture I looked at this morning in Matthew chapter number six and verse 21, which says, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. That is very powerful in understanding how we use our time is an indication of what is important to us. As you know, we are studying out of this book, and I'm encouraging everybody to get this book, Great Pearls from the Biblical Treasure Chest, which has to do with us understanding, stewarding every aspect of our life and stewarded it, steward, stewarding it from a God conscious state. What does that mean? That means that in stewarding, stewarding our life in every aspect, we are seeking the divine hand and instruction of God. And I want you to understand that the most common gift given to mankind is time, is time. 7.2 billion people on the earth and each one of us have been given time. And whether you are the billionaire, whether you are the poor person, whether you're young, old, black, or white, whether you have money, whether you don't have money, each person is given the same allotment of time. One of the things that is challenging that we see as we are living and going through through this particular phase is how much time that we waste. I'm not the only one that has ever wasted time. But here's the truth of the matter. 
whatever, and I said this earlier today, I want you to hear me clearly, whatever you value, you invest in. Listen, let me say that again. Whatever you value, you invest in. And some of us have spent time investing in poor, in poor investments. We have put our energy into poor investments that did not yield the type of return that we would want for our life. Now, you can sit there and be and act like you have it, but I know I have had situations and times in my life where I did not invest properly. Who am I talking to? Because understanding when we, become, we really get conscious of, of stewarding our time from a God consciousness, it means that we don't, we spend our time and our energy in good investments. See, now I want you to understand this. Time continues on and it cannot be controlled. However, you have the ability to determine how you will use it. I want to say that again. Time continues on. It cannot be controlled. You, However, you have the ability to determine how you will use it. I want to ask a question. As we are coming into this new month and literally after this month we'll have four months in this year how have you used 2022 so far let me ask you that question how have you used 2022 so far understanding that time is a commodity that you cannot get back did have you been effective effective or have you wasted time so when you make that observation and when you come to that conclusion it requires that sometimes you have to redefine your priorities many of us have our priorities in the wrong place so therefore, we waste time on the wrong things. And because a lot of people in the body of Christ and believers are struggling to know their assignment and purpose, they spend their time on unnecessary things that will not yield them a return. Because you must put your time in concerning the calling, the assignment, and the agenda that God has called to your life. Who am I talking to tonight? And I, in time and money, bless you, Pastor, show our true commitment. Oh, man. Time, let me say it again, and money show our true commitment. How do you say that? Because you can say whatever you want out of your mouth. But if I look at your time and I look at your money, I can tell what is important to you. Now, let me be very honest. I like food. So a lot of my time and a lot of my money is spent eating food. However, the question I must ask myself and, and wherever you are is, is the food I'm eating a good investment for my body? Lord, help me tonight. Because I've gained quite a bit of weight. Can I tell you all the secret? I, I, had to, I had to preach Sunday. I had to struggle to find a suit that I could wear. I could literally not fit into one of my suits. So I said to myself, I need to look at what this time commitment <laughs> It's causing, y'all like and share this, this broadcast, like and share it, what it is doing. Why am I saying that? Because the stewardship of time, I want to say this, and you need to hear this. The stewardship of your time, and tag somebody you know who needs to hear this. The stewardship of time, listen to this, is is the management of a piece of eternity that you're called to fulfill. The stewardship of time 
is the management of eternity that you are called to fulfill. Each one of us have a divine purpose in time that was prescribed in eternity that can only be fulfilled as you live out in time. What am I saying? I'm saying to you, you have a certain span to get things done. It is imperative that you understand you have been allotted the same eight hours across the, I mean, excuse me, the same time across the board. And you have got to ask yourself the question, am I living in busyness or am I living in purpose? Am I living in busyness or am I living in purpose? Am I living in a way that honors God with the time that I have? All right. We've talked about this morning, Ephesians 5, 16, which says, redeeming the time for the day is evil. Now, most people will, will interpret that as far as making sure that your soul and everything is ready. That is true. But when we talk about that word redeem, it means to gain, to buy back, to get back, to regain possession, which means I have got to take the responsibility to take control of my time. To, to, to when I was redeemed by Jesus, he brought me back out of darkness into light. So I have got to ask myself the question, Am I, am I redeeming? Am I making good use? Am I buying back? Am I regaining control and possession of my time? The question, let me ask a question. Who is controlling your time? I want to give you a secret. Whoever has your attention has your time. You need to put that in the comments. Whoever has my attention has my time. If they have my attention, they have my time because my, my focus is where my energy is going. Oh, we're about to go somewhere. I'm just getting started. This train, y'all know that this train ride real slow. So when I understand that, I have to be able to understand that my focus cannot be distracted because I'm stewarding my time. I'm stewarding my time. So I don't, I don't spend time in wasted moments and seasons with people who have no understanding of where and what my life is. I've got to invest my time in making sure that it is a fulfillment of, of eternity's design plan for my life. So I want to look at this. And I need you to understand this. We talked about this, but I want to deal with this. This concept of the Old Testament of time as it relates to the management of appointed times, the right time, the opportunity for some event or action. You need to write this down if you can, but keep it in your mind, but you need to write this down. I must steward my God-given moments. Put that in the comments or write it down. I must steward listen to me, my God-given moments. Um, I really, I really wish you could grab what I'm saying tonight. <laughs> hear, hear it again. I must steward the opportunities and the moments that God has given to me. Because there is only a certain time span 
that God has given me to fulfill it. Luke 19, 40 through 44, this is 41 through 44. This, this really blew me away. Now, as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, if you had known, even you, especially in this, your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden, listen to this, from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another. Listen to this, because you did not know the time of your visitation. Here is the consequence of not stewarding a moment. He said to them, you're going to experience destruction because you didn't know what time it is. Put in the comments, do you know what time it is? I want to see you put it on Instagram and on, on, on Facebook and on YouTube. Put that in the comments. Do you really know what time it is? I remember growing up um, on, I believe it was Channel 11, they would say, um, um, it's 11 o'clock. Do you know where your child is? And we are in an hour where it is imperative that you be so connected to God that you know what time it is and you have to be. We always say this, the children is a car, they do the times, they do what to do. A lot of people know the time, but you don't know what to do. Mm. Because, and I taught this in my mentorship class, in this new construct, there must be a new mindset because this is a different world. And I'm sorry to tell you, it's a different church. This is, let me say this to you prophetically. We are entering into designated moments that only those who walk in revelation of what time it is will be able to experience, to, to, to manifest. He literally said to them, the consequences of y'all not understanding what's going to bring you peace is that you didn't understand the visitation. So what he literally was saying to them, you did not take advantage of the opportunity in front of you. So therefore you have to deal, how many of us wish we could go back and take advantage of some opportunities that we lost in the past, that if we had, had taken the, advantage, the, the, the opportunity, we would not have dealt with so much chaos. How many of us wish when the way of escape was made, we wouldn't have got caught up with something or someone or some situation that ended up causing us grief because we did not know what time it was. Many of us got into debt because we didn't know what time it was. Many of us got into relationships with people because we did not discern the right season. And all the while, God was telling us, this ain't the time to be doing that or doing them. Lord help me. <laughs> who, who am I helping tonight? Listen to this. Listen to this. When we mismanage moments, we mismanage the opportunity for us to experience the eternal purpose God has for us. What does that mean? When I mismanage moments, I experience days of hell and not days of heaven.
I need y'all to like this broadcast and share and share it with everybody. Because I'm telling you, there's an anointing on this teaching this month. I, I don't play games like this. I'm telling you, the Lord has told me. Those of us who will grab this revelation for this next turn that's getting ready to happen, you're going to be thanking God that you actually sat and participated because many of us, <laughs> many of us are operating out of a place of fear because we don't know what time it is. A recession is never a place for the believer to be afraid. It's an opportunity for God to stretch your gift. So opportunities are created in, in crisis. So, so, so what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? You have to walk in wisdom to manage the moments that are given to you. Listen to what the psalmist said. He said, he said, um, teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. Make the days count so that I can use wisdom to walk it out. Understand the season and the time and allow me to be aware because if I'm not aware, I will get caught up in what other people are doing. Here's, here, here's, here's the thing that you got to understand. is that you have got to make the decision to create new so that you can steward new and not steward it like your past. Because the problem with many of us is that many of us are living in the present as if the past is still a reality. So we have not moved past a certain place or a certain age or a certain space. And what has caused us to be destroyed is that we are acting as if the past is our reality when it's only a figment of our imagination. And our future is calling us. Bless you, Auntie. But our past is stuck because our future is calling us, but our, we are not present to the moment to know that God wants to take us somewhere, but we have to be present to the moment. So, so, so I, I, I must be in a place to understand that time can be either a blessing or a curse. Because time, listen to this, and you need to write this down if you can, it's the fulfillment of eternity. You and I were not called just to take up space. You and I, you were called to fulfill a purpose on the earth. Listen to what I'm saying. You and I were called to be the manifestation of God's will on the earth not based on other people's opinion or perspective of what you are called to fulfill. Because what can happen is that people will pull you into what they feel is the will of God for you. And if you're not clear, you'll miss your assignment. Let me talk about me. I may get in trouble for this. Everybody say, oh, Brad, when you going to start a church? You should be a pastor. You should be that. That ain't my season. And I'm praying it never is my season. <laughs> but I understand the time and the space I'm called to fulfill. Because the grace that I need is for the time that I'm called to. I don't want to walk into a place that I don't have time and grace for that is not God's intention for my life. Because I'm comparing myself to my peers who God has called into pastoral ministry. And because they are doing it, I want to do it. 
And that's what we have in, in the in the body. That's what we have going on. A monkey see, a monkey do. If, if this person is prophesying, now I want to prophesy. This person is, 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 is an apostle. I'm an apostle. If I if I'm called to the prophetic and I'm called to be to the office of evangelist and all these other things, then now it becomes a monkey see a monkey do. I'm not talking about people who are genuinely called by God. I'm talking about people who don't understand what time it is. Listen to this. Listen to Ecclesiastes three and eleven, and I'm getting ready to close. He hath made everything beautiful. In its own time. Listen to this. That word beautiful there is not talking about the physical aesthetic of how a person looks. It means you have come into maturity. You have come into full development in what? In his own time. There is a time for you to fully develop into your purpose. I'm, I'm really, I'm really want to help somebody. There is a specific time that's been allotted to you and I to come into maturity and that we will not live as if we don't have a set time. God has a time for you, but you must steward that time and ensure and make sure that you are living in a way that says, God, mature me for the time you are calling me to. Don't let the time come and I'm not ready. And that's what happens with a lot of us. We want things, but when we come, when it comes to our lives, we're not ready for it. And it shows in our behavior, our immaturity, our lack of discipline and character, our lack of knowing how to handle the assignment in the moment. The reason that we have so many people who are opportunists because they have not yet learned how to yield to the process of time so God can mature you. Because it is God who makes it beautiful, who makes it mature. Because he knows if you get exposed too soon, you will embarrass yourself and embarrass the kingdom. When we try to run before our time, we miss the process of maturity that would teach us how. See, see, I don't care how gifted and anointed you are. If you don't steward that gift properly, it will end up destroying you. I know, I know, I know, I know this is kind of tough. All of us are gifted. I'm gifted. But we have to learn that allow the process to make us mature. Now, here, here's what I need you to understand. You do not need to wait till the end of this year to start making intentions and actions that say, I want to steward my time better. I want you to hear me. You have to make the decision. I am going to steward, to manage, to look at. I had in my mentorship class, I had them do a um, time audit. Audit your time. Look at how much time you spend. That's right, Lady Carl. Look at how much time you spend on Netflix, in the gym, and at every all these other places. Have them all do a time audit. Look at your time. And one of the observations that I made, and I ain't put nobody on front street, is that there was no time spent committed to the thing that they said that they wanted to do. Don't tell me you have a ministry and you have no time to study. 
Don't tell me you want to start a business and you don't you don't spend time in that business. You don't in, listen. If you can watch, if you can watch TV and if you can watch Netflix and you can watch all this other stuff, you have time. And the one of the things that that, that really challenged me about us, and I'm not fussing, is that we jump around in church, say we're gonna be millionaires. We have no strategy. We have nothing. What did I say? I, I told y'all prophetically what the Lord said. This is the year of establishment. We cannot lo no longer act like mom and pop shops. God is telling us we got to be established because the only thing we either we're going to re receive chaos or we're going to receive peace based on how we 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 manage the moment of visitation. And it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And I'm going to say something else. It's here. More people create opportunities in crisis than they do in days of ease. Research all of the millionaires, historic Andrew Carnegie, Henry Ford, um, the Roosevelt. Name all of these people. They maximize in crisis what are you doing with your time that it is it, it is either you're investing it poorly or you're investing it good here is what you need to understand and this is this is what what the lord is saying to us today i keep i keep pushing for people I ask them, what is your vision? What do you see? What is it that you're looking for? Because the vision that God has given to you, the aims and the goals, if they're really a priority, you'll make time for them. Here's what, what we here's what we get. And this is what this is the powerful thing about God. And I want you to hear this. Time creates opportunities for fresh starts and new beginnings. You just have to see it that way. If you just see it as it's too late, it's over, it's not going to happen, my time is over, I want to tell you, let me prophesy to somebody that was just getting ready to give up. I want to tell you, it is time for you to create to launch, to develop, to pursue, and to add massive value to the life you have been given. Let me give you that word again. It is time for you to create, launch. Somebody put the word create in the, in the comments. It's time to create. Somebody, it's time to launch. Put the word launch in, in the comments. It's time to develop. It's time to pursue, and it's time to add massive value. Let me say it again. It is time to create. It is time to launch. It's time to develop. It's time to pursue and add massive value to the life you have been given. You have been given a life. You have been given an assignment. You have been given a purpose. You have been given a, a, a designated span. And this is the time. The Lord told me to tell somebody. This is the time that you're going to walk into restoration. He said, I will restore the years that the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm has destroyed. You think it's over. God says it, it's just beginning. I'm, 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 I'm really through. But I want you to hear me. You think that it's over. God is saying this is the time that you're getting ready to see something happen. Lord have mercy. I'm trying to help somebody today. I'm trying to help you today. I hope you're hearing me. You must understand God has given you and I both an opportunity 
to develop an ear to hear what the spirit is saying and cooperating with that assignment and be able to say that we are going to steward the time that has been given us. I want to tell somebody tonight, time is of the essence. Quit playing with your time. Because when because you are playing with what God has given to you. And there's a whole lot of things you can get back. But you cannot get back time. You can always get some more money. But you have got to live and understand. You have to be at the place to live to steward the time that God has given to you. Now, let me say this. You have got to understand everything has its proper place in time and begin to pray, God, show me what is priority in this moment. We cannot live in our excuses. We cannot live in yesterday and we cannot live as victim. You have to say today is the beginning of the rest of my life. I'm making different changes. I am going to be a steward of what God has placed in my hand. I am not going to play games with what's been assigned to me. I have to steward this time. I have to understand that it is the time for me to, to be focused. I cannot waste time. And can I get caught up in trivial and unnecessary arguments? I must steward the thing that God has placed in my hand. And what has he placed in my hand? He has placed time in my hand. And he expects me to do something with it that will bring him glory and honor and not make excuses for why I did not manage well what he has placed in my hand. What is God saying to us tonight? Time is of the essence. This is a different season. This is a different day. We cannot live like yesterday. We must walk in the power and presence of God that says, this is my time of visitation. This is the, there's an old song. Um, I forgot who, I think it's Bishop McClendon, Clarence McClendon. He used to sing, this is our hour of visitation. Will we be like Israel and miss it? Or will we see it and take the opportunity? They're talking recession all around us. Monkey pox is the next thing. Another may possible shutdown. I'm going to ask you, what will you do this time with the visitation that is coming to the world? This is the mandate. Steward your time. Manage your time. You need to start evaluating and auditing your time and making sure that what you are doing and how you are doing it is in sync with what the Father has told you to do. No more wasted time. Let's live in a way that honors God, but also honors time. Because eternity has put into our hands the divine assignment and purpose of fulfillment. And you and I must live in this place of saying, God, there is a purpose and there is a time. Allow me to use wisdom to be able to use it for your glory and for your honor. Listen, I am done. Thank you so much for joining me on tonight. I pray that you were blessed by what we shared on this evening. Listen, I'm excited about what God is doing. And I pray that you are excited as well. I want to encourage everybody, everybody, everybody that's listening to me. I want you to get this book. I want you to get this book. If you're on Facebook, the all the information is there. If you're on Instagram, look on my Instagram, the Prophetic Oil Instagram page, and it would tell you how to get this book. 
This book we are teaching out of this month is from my late pastor and father in the gospel, Dr. McCann. As always in August, we teach from one of his books, but I'm telling you, this book is prophetic for us, and I need you to grab hold of the principles of this. I want you to get this book. Get it as soon as possible. Order it. Flood the gates. Get this book because God is, I'm telling you, I feel an anointing on this month for those of you who will participate in what God wants to do because God is setting us up for something major that is coming and we need to steward the moment. So I want you to get this book as soon as possible. Know that I'm praying with you and for you. Listen, I'm going to ask everybody tonight to sow the 2618 seed. That's just the Thursday seed that we ask for. No gimmicks, no games, all God. I'm going to ask every person under the sound of my voice that ways to give are on the screen. I want you to give the 2618 seed. I, you know, listen, if you don't feel led to, we understand it. But those who are part of the prophetic oil community, you know how we do. Amen. And I also want to say to those of you who are part of prophetic oil, I want you to spread the word to everybody because we will possibly be shifting the time because of things that are going on. But I want you, to, I want your support and I want you to be here. But I'm going to ask everyone to begin to give that 2618. You can give by Cash App, Zelle, or PayPal. And I thank you for partnering and helping to get the vision to come to pass. I'm praying that even as you are walking through the rest of this day, that God will bless you. So I'm going to ask you to give that 2618 on tonight and share with us as we are doing the work of God. Again, please order this book so that you can be with us. Next week, I'll be back and I'll be talking about the stewardship of our money. Now, I know, I know it's a little tough when we come to that money, but God's going to give us um, the strength to do that. Order the book, Sold the 2618 Seed, and make sure that you are following us on all social media platforms. We are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We are on YouTube. You also, uh, we are actually, I'm in the process of, of redeveloping the Prophetic Oil website. So um, you'll be seeing some new information come out by September, Lord willing. So I want you to be connected to me and connected to us. Amen. And there'll be some different things coming where you can sign up to be part of the prophetic oil email list and, and things. To thank you, Lady Renee, for sowing that 26, the 2618 seed on tonight. Thank you for those of you who are already participating and sowing into this seed. Listen, listen, next Monday, I'm going to be putting out a poll to see whether 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. is a better time for us to go live. So you get your chance to vote, and then I'm going to pray and see what God says. <laughs> so I want you to be a part of that, and I want to also for us to have full participation and for those to be a part of what we are doing. So I'm going to ask you again to give that 2618C on tonight. There are some things that, that um, we need to do as far as ministry-wise, and I need your help and support in doing that and making sure that we're, we're in integrity and doing what we need to do. Also, write this date down, the 27th of August. If you are creative, if you're an aspiring entrepreneur, if you are creative, if you're somebody that, that is needs to know how to launch um, and, and, and do some things in that area, I'll be having a, a master class on the 27th of August. Registration will be opening on next week. Also, in September, we will be handing uh can somebody put the cash app in the comments for my aunt so she can um she can get it i'm gonna work on all this so i want everybody to be able to see so they can sow their seed i want so I'm, so if somebody put it in the comments it's uh prophetic oil tlj let me i think i can put it prophetic oil tlj you can um be able to, to sow and give that seed on today so listen I want you to get ready. Um, our coaching intensive is coming in, in September. You do not want to miss this. This is different than anything that you've ever seen. And I'm telling you, registration will be going forward, and you want to be a part of that cohort, and so you can be blessed. Thank you for those of you who are sewing. I, I bless you, and I thank you for, the, for your gifts and for being a part. I will see you all on Tuesday for Prophetic Oil. Love you all, and God bless you.